So one of my contemporaries recently posted this exact same title with a phrase that I thought war was warranted some discussion. And let me just say that what he shared in his video was an absolute rant with respect to this phrase. However, I have a little different, I have a twist on this. So let me share you the phrase that he had a rant about. And then I want to share you share with you my perspective with a slight twist. Not so much the phrase he used, but something else men use that are absolutely confusing and quite frankly, sometimes are just downright lies. So what he shared in his video was the phrase when a man says, I'm not looking for a serious relationship. I'm not looking for a serious relationship. OK, now, certainly that's a phrase that is a major red flag when a man says that. Now, ladies, let me just say something about red flags, though. There's a big difference between a red flag and a deal breaker. That's right. A red flag and a deal breaker. A red flag actually means ask deeper questions. That's what a red flag is. So if a man did share with you that he's not looking for a serious relationship, it begs to dig a little bit deeper on what he actually means with that. But today I want to share with you the more common phrase men say that is actually can be incredibly confusing and is actually a deeper red fly than the men, red flag, excuse me, not red fly, a red flag versus the men who say, I'm not looking for a serious relationship. Okay, so before we get into it, I think it's really important to identify the three active types of the three types of men who are actively dating today. These are what I call the users, the spenders, and the growers. That's right, the users, spenders, and growers. And if you're not familiar with my chart on this, I think it's 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 important that you look into this. But here are the three types of people actively dating today. Roughly about 20% of the population are users. Roughly about, and this is not a fact, this is merely an opinion. 60% are spenders, and the last are the growers and the builders. Now, the users are those people that seek a short-term game, love bombers, gold diggers, entitled people, selfish people. All they care about their own needs, that's the users. Then the spenders, those are the people that seek connection, companionship, and sex with no direction, uncertainty. They're fearful about relationship. They have a dysfunctional life. And lastly are the growers and builders, roughly about 20%. These are the people that seek a long-term relationship. They're emotionally grown up, good relationship skills. They have their act together. All right. Reason why it's important to recognize the three types of people who are actively dating is that 80% of the population are either users or spenders, okay? Very small percentage of the population are true growers and builders. These are the people that genuinely want a significant relationship. They want to build a life with someone. They want to either live with someone, get married, or maybe they might want to do what's called living together apart, okay? Now, I'm primarily talking about the demographic that's the over 40 category. Again, for those who follow my channel, I'm a midlife dating and relationship coach. Those are people that are after baby making years and before retirement. And that's a unique population because men in their 20s and 30s are oftentimes seeking a wife or the mother of their children. And certainly with the demographic I deal in, roughly about 75% of singles who are over 45 years old are divorced. And people that gone through a divorce, it's like an unraveling of the tapestry of their old life and many don't know how to integrate someone new into their life. Okay, are you ready for the really confusing phrase that men say? Well, here it is. And this is a phrase that needs to be scrutinized because when a man says to you, I am looking for a relationship, or he might even say, I want a relationship, or worse, he says, I want a long-term relationship. And I, why I say worse is, did you know that when a man says to a woman what I call relationship talk, it actually could be a ploy? It could be a lot, downright lie. And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let me ask any, let me ask some of you or all of you, have you ever had a man say to you, I'm looking for a relationship? You began exploring a relationship with him. You went out to a few dinners, you had some, uh, you spent some time with friends. 
Maybe, possibly, maybe you did some social activities, hobbies, maybe some mutual interests. You had sex together. And then all of a sudden, this, you know, for the first few weeks, it kind of takes off. And then it's the slow fade. And then he says to you, I'm not looking for a serious relationship. Well, wait a minute. You told me before you were looking for a relationship. And now all of a sudden you're not looking for a relationship. Well, ladies, isn't this quite confusing how a man can say, I'm looking for a relationship, and then all of a sudden say, I'm not looking for a relationship? Now, obviously, his, his, his verbiage that he said to you is he's just not that into you, most likely, and that sucks, especially when he went on to this trajectory to saying how amazing you are, how wonderful you are, how I'm ready to be in a fully committed relationship, only to do with the turnaround. See, here's the confusing thing about the phrase, I'm looking for a relationship. The word relationship is ambiguous if it's not defined. That's right. It's ambiguous if it's not defined. For example, you might be thinking the word relationship means this. You're looking for something where you spend two, three, or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in your personal and your professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. That's what you might be thinking. His, his terminology for the word relationship might simply mean, I just want to see you at my beck and call. See, without defining the word relationship, it's incredibly confusing, and this is why it's a red flag. And remember I said red flag means ask deeper questions. Because here's the reality, coming back to those users, those spenders, and the grower builders. See, it's not just what they say, but you actually evaluate, have to evaluate, is this person even capable of a relationship? So when a man says, I want a relationship, I'm looking for a relationship. Well, first we have to define what it is that means to him. You got to ask the question, what does commitment look like for you? What does a relationship look like for you? Now you might start by expressing what it looks like for you. Remember my, my rhetoric is, you, you know, the, the social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends. You have to decide that for yourself. Sadly, many of you are in a relationship. It's a cyber relationship. You spend more time texting on the phone than you actually spend time getting to know one another through physical bonding with one another. But that's a whole nother conversation. So I said first, you have to define what does a relationship look like for this. You ask him, what does a relationship look like for you? By the way, there's a, I'm going to throw a little uh, curveball in here. You might always ask a man, does anybody else believe they're in a relationship with you? That's always a good question to be asking. But the follow-up question, once you've decided what a relationship looks like, the follow-up question is this. And is really to determine if he's capable of a significant relationship. So how do you determine if he's capable of a significant relationship? Well, folks, I created a coaching, by the way, right here is a link to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. By the way, in the description below, you can click the link to schedule a call with me. My whole coaching program is designed to teach you what questions you should be asking based on your personality to determine, is this person matching what you desire in a relationship? Are they capable of a relationship? But more importantly, are they emotionally mature enough to be in a healthy, happy relationship? See, those users and spenders, those users are people in it for the short run. Those are the guys that are the love bombers, okay? The real challenging demographic are the spenders. And why are they called spenders? It's because they want to spend time with you but they're not capable of a significant relationship because their life is in chaos. They have emotional traumas that have not been healed. They have residue from their past lives that they haven't really addressed. And what happens is, is they use you temper, they, they spend time with you to fill their own needs without the capacity to build something deeper. And I'm here to be your big brother. I wish I could be there with a shotgun on a first date, pointed at the guy's head saying, what's your intentions with my little sister? See, 
there's no consequences for using people. There's no consequences. Think about that. Now, folks, we have to recognize what's changed in the last 100 years or really the last 20 to 30 years is these days we're meeting absolute strangers. We know nothing about, rarely do you know anything about the person you're meeting other than what they've told you. See, think about this. This is like, a matter of fact, if you were going to hire somebody for, for a prestigious job, would you take their resume on face value or would you check their references? See, here in the dating realm, we have very little capacity to check someone's references. Unlike 30, 40, 50 years ago, most of the time you knew somebody who knew. Like even when I got married, my, my now ex-wife, she knew one of my close friends. It's not how we met. We actually met through a dating site, but she knew one of my close friends. And actually, it turned out she grew up and she grew up, she went to the high school that was right next to the high school of mine. Turns out we had a lot of mutual friends. I could find, I, there were, there was like no degrees of separation between the two of us. These days, when you're meeting total strangers and you know nothing about their backstory other than what they've told you, you have to do a better job of being a detective, whether you like it or not. You have to be a detective because. This person that you're investing your heart in, you're investing your heart into someone who's saying nice things to you, that's taking you out. See, romance clouds judgment. I've often said romance should be reserved for those people in a significant relationship, not as an entry point into a relationship. Think about that for a second. Romance should be reserved for those in a significant relationship, not as an entry point into a relationship. And yet most women love the idea of being romanced, but guess what? It clouds judgment. And in the early stages of dating, your discernment means everything. Raise your hand if you've been used by a guy. Raise your hand twice if you've been raised, used by two guys. Raise your hand over and over again if you've been used by men. And what I mean by used, what I mean by being used, has a man said to you all these nice things, expressing an interest to explore a relationship only to do the double take, the turnaround, the pulling back, the ghosting, the disappearing. See, whether we like it or not, it's a small percentage of men that are really capable of a healthy relationship, just being capable of it. And then they also have to desire it. So men who are capable of a significant relationship typically want a significant relationship. They're very clear that they want to either move in together, get married at some point in their life, or they're very intentional about wanting a serious relationship and their actions demonstrate it. See, these are men who will actually want to spend regular time with you. I know many of you are finding yourself in what I call cyber relationships. You spend most of your time texting one another, believing you're in a relationship with someone. I get it. Mo many of you are in long distance dynamics. I get it. Listen, there's my picture of my sweetheart and I, long distance relationship. Let me tell you, we are the exception. We're not the rule. What made our relationship the exception or exceptional, as I feel, is we were very deliberate. We made, a, we, during a hundred, keep in mind, we had a 1700 mile distance between the two of us. In a hundred day period, we were physically together with each other 45 of a hundred days, give or take. 45 days out of a hundred. That's literally, if you lived around the corner, that would be seeing each other every other day. Many of you are engaged in long distance texting relationships. You barely see each other. You have, and by the way, whether it's long distance or right around the corner, I know someone, um, I was talking to someone recently that they're dating a guy that lives a um, half hour away. They see each other once a week. Once a week is like, is like a turtle's pace to get to know one another. But Jonathan, I'm so busy. I don't have time for a relationship. Well, guess what? I want you to think about this for a second. The best way to get to know someone is to live with them. The second best way to get to know someone is to go on a two-week vacation with them. Our current methodology of dating is just like, you know, is just 
I call it trying it on for size. You see each other a little bit. You go back to your respective homes. You see each other a little bit. You go back to your, and it gets long drawn out. See, you really don't get to know someone until you're actually in their environment, till you actually spend time with their family, you spend time with their friends to see if they're legit or not. And it starts very early on by being discerning. And as I said earlier, romance clouds discernment. So coming back to the, the phrase, that's actually a med, cute, confusing phrase that's actually a red flag is actually when he says, I'm looking for a relationship because without defining what relationship is, you could find yourself, you're thinking a relationship like this and he's thinking relationship like this. And guess what that space in between is called? Drama, 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 because one person wants more. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know if it is. Please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And by the way,